اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد حتى لا يبقى شيء من الصلاة عليه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأسألك اللهم بالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا آدم عليه السلام وبالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا نوح عليه السلام وبالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا هود عليه السلام وبالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا إبراهيم عليه السلام وبالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا صالح عليه السلام وبالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا يونس عليه السلام وبالأسماء التي دعاك بها سيدنا أيوب عليه السلام سنوات شرفة يترنلين آخر وعقبت لرحير الله آل إزواجه تأخرة أبلاد ورسول سامجن أفندي لرمزين سيد مياز أم رسول كرام حاضرات أرباب شرف لنا Pirimiz bir Allah'a beş radiyallahu anh Efendimizin Mihmandar Resul-i Kibriya Eyyub Sultan Halid bin Zeyd Ebu Ayyub el-Ansar radiyallahu anh Şah Mürşidan, Şah Hacı Muhammed Bahattin Şah Nakşibendi el-Buhari, Mevlana Celaleddin el-Rumi, Mevlana Ziyad bin Halid el-Bağdadi, Sahibü Zaman, Kıbletül İslam, Şeyh Mevlana Muhammed Nazım Adel el-Ekkani, Kaddesallahu esrahum hazıratın ervahi için. Hademül Harameyn-i Şerifeyn, Yavuz Sultan Selim Han, Ebu'l Feth ve'l Mehazi Fatih Sultan Mehmet Han ve Serdar Hakan Sultan Abdülhamid Han Cennet Mekan Firdevs-i Aşiyan Hazirat'ın ervahına ve avni inayetine Alel husus bu caminin bayanisi Sahib-el Hayrat ve Ehl-i Hasenat Sahib-i Seyf-i Abdülkerim el Kıbrıs'ar Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş İmmam Mezzin Kayyim Cemaatinin ve Kahve-i Ehl-i İvan'ın ervahı için Allah rızası için El-Fatiha أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayy aleyhisselam Hayy aleyhisselam Hayy aleyhisselam Hayy aleyhisselam Allah ekber Allah ekber La ilahe illallah Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Ve ahmedullah ta'ala ve nasrafir ve şerve en la illaha illallah ve rahmetu illa şerife lah. Ve şerve enne seyyidna Muhammedin afiku ve habibu ve resulu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve sahbihi tabiq ve lehmi rahim ve rahim ve rahim. Ve zannet de ala tahkik ve zannet ala al-amin. Ve lehmi rızna ala tahkik. Ömer el-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakır Umar Osmanu Ali ve ala bakta sahabe tabi'in ve durunullah ta'ala aleyhi mecma'in Ya eyyuhal mu'minul hazirun, yetekullah ta'ala ve inna Allah ma'al ladhin etkallu ladhinahu muhsinun Elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin 
Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafi al-mabba mursalin Sayyidina Maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says in the Holy Quran Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Truly, we revealed it on the night of power What will make you know what the night of power is? The night of power is better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend in it by the permission of their Lord with all decrees. Peace until the rising of the dawn. Sarakallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the noble prophet to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the quran e kirim Sayyid al-Arab wal-Ajam, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa alayhi sallatu wassalam. Sayyid al-Kainat alayhi sallatu wassalam is saying, O my Ummat, your salawats on me are a protector for your duas. Your salawat brings you to the pleasure of Allah and purifies your actions. And he alayhi sallatu wassalam says, Whoever recites Salat al-Ibrahimiyya, it shall be a witness for him on Judgment Day and I will make shafaat for him. Ya Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, just as you have sent prayers upon Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim, and bless Muhammad والسلام, and the family of Muhammad والسلام, just as you have blessed Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim in all the worlds. Verily, you are the praiseworthy and the glorious. Ani. And may all peace and blessings be upon our master Muhammad والسلام, and upon his noble family, and his blessed companions, especially the four Khulafa Rashidin, the four true friends, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Omar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza. The Holy Prophet والسلام, says, The fountain of Kawsar has four pillars. One is commanded by Abu Bakr, the second by Umar, the third by Usman, and the fourth by Ali. And may Allah count us as their servants in this life and the next life, inshallah. And may Allah send peace and blessings upon the noble mashayikh of the Naqshbandi way, the keepers of the prophetic secret. May peace and blessings be upon our honorable Ottoman sultans, the guardians of the shariat and the sunnah, and upon all those who follow them until the last day. Ya ayyuhal mu'minun, O believers, uh, today is the holy day of Juma, in the holy month of Ramadan, in the holy last 10 days of Ramadan. These are days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dressed with majesty and honor. These are days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted to his Habib والسلام, as a means to bring his nation, the Ummati Muhammad, back to purity and back to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These days and nights are precious gifts. And if we lose them, they are not coming back to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling out to us and reaching out to us in these days and nights. How terrible will it be for the servant to not respond to his Lord's call. And in these nights, the Holy Prophet والسلام, and his Sahabi and the Awliya Allah, they are saying that very heavily, Laylatul Qadir, the night of power is hidden in these nights. The Holy Prophet والسلام, is warning us not to be in ghaflat and ignorance about looking for this night. He والسلام, said in a hadith narrated by Hazrat Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, this month of Ramadan has come to you and in it there is a night that is better than a thousand months. Whoever is cut off from it is cut off from all goodness and no one is cut off from his goodness except one who is truly cut off. This is a heavy warning from our Holy Prophet and the believer is the one who takes the warnings. Our Shaykh Sahib al-Sayyif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kibrisi al-Rabbani, who is giving us the, protect, the, prophetic, the prophetic good news and warnings, is also warning us about taking Laylatul Qadr lightly. Holy Prophet was worrying looking at the previous nations who had long lives and spent their whole lives in Ibadat 
and knowing his nation's age is 60 to 70 years, and he was worrying. And the Sahabis were also sad and worrying about it. And Jibrail salam, came and said, Ya Muhammad salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing you and your nation with one night that he has not given any other nation. That is Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Anyone who keeps that night properly will be rewarded with more than 80 years of worship's reward. Look at the mercy that Allah is sending to you, O Muslims, O sleeping Muslims. Look at this month and what Allah is giving to you during that night. Imagine what will happen if you keep it for 20 years of your life. Where are the people to think? No thinking anymore. Empty. They say, I am busy. I am busy working with my business. Then may it be bankrupt. Lose your job. You are leaving Allah's way. Allah is preparing, giving something special to you, to this ummah, and you are not taking care of it. You must lose everything. Yes. These are the words of the friends of Allah. And he is raising his voice at us to wake us up and saying, your Lord is trying to save you. Your Lord is trying to show mercy to you. Your Lord is trying to forgive you. Your Lord is trying to free you from the fire you have made to your own self. Oh, heedless mankind, why are you not waking up? Your Lord has prepared a banquet for you. Why are you not attending? It is a dishonor for a man to not accept the invitation of a sultan. What about for men who reject the invitation of the king of kings, Malikul Mulk, Allah Jalawala? What is Laylatul Qadir? What is happening in Laylatul Qadir? Ghazul Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Gelani, Qadrasul Asir, is recording the hadith of Hazrat ibn Abbas, who is saying, when Laylatul Qadir comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order Jibrail alayhi salam to go down to the earth with 70,000 angels who are from the angels of Sidratul Muntaha. They will each have banners of light and they will set them up in four places. The Kaaba, the Rauza al sharif Baitul Maqdis and Tur Sina. Then Jibreel will tell the angels to spread out in all directions. Every single house or room or tent or boat where there is a mu'min or a mu'mina will receive a visit from the angels. Unless the place has a dog or a pig or liquor or a person who is in Janabat from Haram or an idol. While these angels are circling, they will be praising Allah making His name holy, saying to worship only Allah and begging forgiveness on behalf of the nation. This will continue until dawn, when they will go back up to the sky. The dwellers of the lowest paradise will receive them as guests and ask where they are coming from. The traveling angels will say, we spent the night in the world below because it was Laylatul Qadr for the Ummah Muhammad the dwellers of the lowest paradise will ask, how has Allah treated them? And what has He done to meet their needs? And Jibreel will answer, Allah has forgiven the righteous people amongst them and He has accepted the intercession of the righteous people on behalf of the unrighteous ones amongst them. When the angels of the lower paradise hear this, they will raise their voices in tasbih, in taqdis, and in praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank Him for forgiving and accepting the Ummah. Then they will take their guests to the second paradise. And this will happen in each paradise, going all the way up to the seventh paradise when Jibreel salam, will say, O dwellers of the various paradises, you must go home now. The angels will go back to their own paradise and the angels of the Sidratul Muntaha will return to their place. When they reach Sidratul Muntaha, the same angelic conversation will continue. And the angels of Sidratul Muntaha will be heard by the Janatul Ma'wa, by the Janatul Naim, by the Janatul Ad, and by Janatul Firdaus, and by the Arsh of Rahman, the throne of the Most Merciful. Then the Arsh 
will praise Allah, make his name holy, to thank him for what he has given the Ummah. Then Allah Jalla will speak to his Arsh and say, O oh my throne, why have you raised your voice? And the throne, the Arsh will say, Ya Ilahi, I've just heard the good news that you granted forgiveness last night to the Ummah to Muhammad and that you accepted the intercession of their Salihin on behalf of the non-righteous ones amongst them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to his Arsh, you have spoken the truth, O my throne. But there is even more to it than that. The Ummah to Muhammad in my sight deserves a generous favor. The kind that no eye has ever seen and no ear has ever heard and no human heart has ever imagined. Allah, Allah is Rahman, Allah is Rahim, and Allah is Kareem. O nation, O Muslims, O believers, this is our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what He has prepared for us in this holy night of Qadir. And for those whose sake and for whose sake are we receiving these blessings? Is it for us? No. We are the Ummati Muhammad والسلام, All of this is for that beloved one of Allah, the Holy Prophet والسلام. All of this is because of Sayyidina Al-Awalil wal -Ahirin. All of this is for the Emperor and the Padishah of the two worlds. Without our relation to him, without our being his ummah, there is no Ramazan for us. There is no Qadir for us. There is no mercy for us. There is no forgiveness for us. There is no freedom from fire for us. And look what the angels are saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving the unrighteous ones, the disobedient ones, the rebellious, arrogant, stubborn ones. Why? Is he accepting their forgiveness directly? No. Look at the conversation of the troops, of the angels. We are forgiven because the righteous ones are interceding on the unrighteous's behalf. If we find Laylatul Qadir and we find safety in Laylatul Qadir, it is through the hands of Allah's beloveds, not of ourselves. Sultan al Awliya. Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Karazasir is speaking clearly and plainly about the beauty of this night, saying, May Allah forgive us because we are sinners. Every few minutes or even every few seconds we commit so many sins. So we are asking for our Lord's forgiveness for the honor of His most praised servant Sayyidina Muhammad This holiest of nights is granted to him from his Lord. Almighty Allah, in it all powers adorn Him, all lights illuminate Him, and all angels come to Him. The Archangel Jibrail salam, comes to Him salam, and He is dressed with countless honors on this holy night. The angels ask forgiveness from Allah for the people, for the sake of the Master of Humanity, Sayyid al-Bashar from the owner of creation, Rabil Kainat. O believers, don't be cut off from Laylatul Qadir. Run to find this night. Leave your sleep a little bit. Leave your comfort a little bit. Leave your routine, egoistic, shaitanic habits that already has no taste a little bit. Wake up, stay awake, and run after the mercy of our Lord. We are all in need of His mercy, especially in these days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited us to Laylatul Qadir for the sake of His beloved one. And the saints of Allah, the awliya Allah are standing up all night asking for us, praying for us, giving shafa'at for us. How shameful if we are found in ghaflat or in disobedience or in rebellion in these nights. O believers, we must run for Allah's mercy. Nobody can think that they have a right to Allah's mercy. It does not matter if you are the son of a sultan. It doesn't matter if you are the son of a scholar. It doesn't even matter if you are a grandson of the Holy Prophet when you have deviated from the way. 
And who is saying this? One of the kings of the Sayyids, one of the most majestic links in our golden chain, Hazrat Imam Jafar al-Saddiq is saying this. Once the great saint, Hazrat Dawud al-Ta'i, came to Hazrat Jafar al-Saddiq and said, O grandson of Rasulullah give me advice because my mind is darkened. And Hazrat Jafar al-Saddiq said, Ya Dawud, you are the great wali, the great saint of this time. Why do you need advice from me? And Hazrat Zidawud said, O grandson of Rasulullah, your family is superior to all mankind and it is your duty to give advice to everyone. And Hazrat Jafar Sadiq said, Ya Dawud, I am afraid. I am afraid that on judgment day my grandfather will grab hold of me and say, Why didn't you fulfill your duty to follow my footsteps? Ya Dawud, this isn't something that depends on lineage, but on good conduct in the presence of Haq. Hazrat Dawud started crying and said, Ya Rabbi, if the one whose clay is shaped from the water of prophethood, the grandson of Rasulullah, the one whose mother is Fatima to Batul, if this one has doubts in himself, then how can I be pleased in my behavior towards you? May peace and blessings be upon Hazrat Jafar Siddiq. That is a Sayyid. The real Sayyid is the one who trembles at the mention of Sayyidina Rasulullah The real Sayyid is the one who is afraid of his grandfather. If he is afraid of his grandfather and he is afraid of Hazrat Ali, what about his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The real Sayyid is not the one who goes around Proclaiming and saying that he is a saint, that he is a high station, that he has dreams of this, that this saint came to him, this prophet came to him, and that he is from a high maqam. The real saint is the one who spends his living, his dying, his breathing, his existence to continue the mission of the Holy Prophet والسلام, to ask for forgiveness for the whole nation and to put himself last. We are trying to be in the company of those kinds of saints. Because Hazrat Anas an, is narrating that the Holy Prophet والسلام, was asked, Who is the family of Muhammad? والسلام. And Holy Prophet والسلام, answered, Every person of taqwa. May we be with the people of taqwa, with that family of Muhammad. والسلام. And may Allah protect us from becoming zalims and becoming supporters of Zalims. Amen. O oh, believers, yes, we are saying goodbye, farewell, al wada to Ramazan. Yes, Ramazan is almost gone. But it is not gone from us yet. We should get up, we should tighten our belts, and we must run towards the pleasure of Allah. We must run towards the pleasure of our Prophet. We must run towards the pleasure of the Awliyaullah. We must run to the pleasure of our Shaykh. We must run to serve those that they love. And the Prophets have first been sent to protect the Muslim, the ones who have been oppressed, the ones who have no rights, the poor, the yatim, the orphans, this is the month that the nation must run to help them. This is not the month of togetherness. This is not the month of eating and drinking. This is not the month of family and good times. This is the month that is supposed to be to run to help those ones that Allah's tajali is on them. This nation has forgotten this. Because we are following, we have been following the Jews and the Christians for so long. Ramazan has become just like Christmas. It has become just like Thanksgiving. It has become just like any other unbeliever festival. We're only concerned about eating and having a good time. Ramazan is not about that. Ramazan, it is about suffering and knowing what is suffering 
and who are those who are suffering and what is suffering for the sake of Allah and to help those that are suffering for the sake of Haq. The nation has become so rich, so wealthy. We have become wealthy, but we have not become generous. Because in this month of generosity, we still see majority of Muslims, they are still being very stingy, they are still being very miserly. And because of that, especially in this year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has closed all the masjids. He has closed all the holy places for Muslims to wake up to say, what have we done? Allah is using the tool of the virus. But don't think that the virus is the cause. It is because of the Muslims, our own disobedience and selfishness and miserliness, that we don't care anymore for what Allah and His Prophet have cared, been caring for. <coughs> that Allah is saying, now in my most holy months, you cannot even come to my presence in a group. Go by yourselves. Since you love to be by yourself, since you don't like to be under a Khalifa, since you don't like to be under a Sheikh or an Imam, since you want to be individualistic, now try to come by yourself. See how it feels. But we have been created to be in Jamaat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in Jamaat and to race for His good pleasure. As he's saying in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, every person has a goal. Every person has a goal to which Allah turns him. So struggle together like in a race toward all that is good. Wherever you are, Allah will bring you all together. Truly, Allah has the power to do all things. Sadaqallah al-Azim. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not bringing us all together in this Ramadan, it must come as a slap to the face of the Ummah. We can understand if the awam is not understanding this, the general people, but where are the sheikhs and where are the imams? Where are those ones who are claiming to have so much knowledge to wake up, to wake the nation up and to say that this is a punishment from our Lord? They are sleeping. We must live as believers. We must spend our time like believers. We must race towards Allah together as believers. The hearts of those jamaat, even if physically separated, they are together. Let us be in jamaat. The jamaat of Sahib al Saif that is running after the pleasure of Allah. This is the Jamaat of the Lions of Allah. This is the Jamaat of the Honorable Ottomans. This is the Jamaat of the Defenders of Truth. Shaykh Fendi is saying, we are defenders of the truth, the Haqqanis. Defenders of the truth, not only through the name, not only through this small area. Anywhere we are walking on top of this earth, we are defending the truth. Anyone who is saying other than that, they must be the agents of Shaitan. In my position, I am a weak servant, but as our Shaykh is saying, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can be the most strong one. But no need for me to be the strong one, because Shaykh Mawlana is on top of everything. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, all those who are going to run and become helpers to shaitans and their jals, welcome. Run right now if you want. If there's not one person left around, don't think that this attitude is going to change. It's not. It's not going to change because we are defending the truth and against shaitans and dajjals, it's going to become more strong and more powerful. Never is it going to become weaker. We may not be able to carry this until the end. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted to us in this life, inshallah rahman, we're going to spend it until the last breath and no man on the face of the earth, no shaitans, no dajjals and no governments are going to be able to put any fear in us because we are holding tightly to Allah, to His Prophet wasalam, and to His awliya. Amin. O believers, O mirids, this is the jamaat that we have been honored to be a part of. Don't take it lightly. Treat it with honor. Keep it on top of your heads. May we be in Jamaat, in this Jamaat, in this life. And may we be in this Jamaat in the next life. May we spend these last few nights of Ramazan running 
after Laylatul Qadir and the pleasure of our Lord and our Prophet and our Shaykh. And we are asking our Lord to help us and to count us as those who find the night for the sake of his Habib, for the sake of the awliya, for the sake of the salihin. And we are asking for the sake of the guide you have sent us, our Master, Shaykh Abdul Karim al kibri Siya Rabbani. Amin. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa huwa lahi al-qaim wa atubu lahi. لا إله إلا الله سبحانك لا إله إلا الله سبحان كتسره لا سبحان كتسره إن دين الله قام صلاة الله بيك ولا الله بيك ولا الله بيك ولا الله بيك